Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. In recent videos, I've been on a roll. I've been using hazelnut in one form or another for one project or another. This small limb is from a year ago. Uh, it, it's dry. The larger piece here is from this year, and it's very wet and very green. But I also recently saw a demo of an emerging bowl. Uh, what's an emerging bowl? One where the bowl seems to be growing out of another block of wood and there's really no seam there to be done with it. So I had to make one but I wanted to stay on theme of the hazelnut. So rather than making out of a standard block of wood, I picked up a limb. Rather than making it square, let's make a natural edge emerging bowl out of this hazelnut. Stay on theme, stay on track, let's do it. The first task is to figure out how to mount my hazelnut limb. There are no flat sides, no square corners, only irregular rounds and ends. Plus, this is green wood with a lot of moisture. The demonstrator used hot melt glue to attach his block to a flat waste block, end grain to side grain. But I've had hot melt glue fail on green wood, so I want more security. So I've decided to use a mortise and tenon and type on two glue. I'll have to let it dry overnight, but that is a small price for safety, either mine or the woods. With the mortise and tenon, there will be a lot more compatible gluing surfaces. So first I'm mounting a piece of pine to the face of my chuck jaws. I'm rounding it and cutting a dovetail tenon for my chuck. then reversing the pine onto the chuck jaws. Now I'll drill a two inch mortise in the pine, followed by a one inch hole in the middle. Technically, this second hole is a waste of time, but I nearly always have a bit of a nub on a tenon turned between centers. The nub prevents a good test fit, but with the smaller second hole, the nub will go in and allow a good test fit. Then after Gluing it all together, I'm confident that the wood will stay put. Now I've mounted the green hazelnut between centers. All I want to do now is to cut the tenon on one end. But as usual, this is a cut, test, cut, test. Not bad this time. That hole for the nub helps. Then glue it and let it dry overnight. Now I'm ready for the real turning. I need to turn a hemisphere on the end of the hazelnut block. I figure I can get about a two inch sphere from the irregular branch. The hard part is the cut between the natural edge and the hemisphere. I need it smooth, despite the irregular outer edge. Then start cutting a sphere. I drilled a two inch hole in scrap plywood and cut it in half and for a template. But I was way off, I had cut the transition too far down the branch. Even though my hemisphere looked good to my eye, it was way too long. Finally, I got tired of trying to make the sphere and just trimmed it back by about a quarter inch. Now I'm close and can finish the sphere. Now the templates actually helped. Then I sanded this hemisphere up through the grits.
next to the bandsaw. I eyeballed the hemisphere for a good cut line. Finally, I settled on a line cutting between the tip of the hemisphere and the pith of the branch. Since this is green wood, it may distort and crack. If I can get rid of the pith, I'll have a better chance. I'm again glad to have the pine block on the bottom to stabilize the branch. Anything smaller would not be safe. Back to the lathe. I've mounted a large threaded wood faceplate. If you're not yet into threaded wood faceplates, too bad. Or just use a waste block on a faceplate or chuck. For me, I love threaded wood faceplates. They're handy. I've also marked the center of my hemisphere on the cut surface. This has to be precise or it will show badly later. I've trimmed the original base pine square to seat well against the faceplate. I drilled a two inch hole in another piece of pine scrap. This I cut in half to hold the hemisphere. Using the tailstock to align the hemisphere, I used hot melt glue to glue the base to the faceplate, the sphere to the support, and some additional supports. I used a whole stick of hot melt glue. Now the scary part. The workpiece is way off center, so I have to be careful to safeguard my hands. I want to relieve the entire piece just a little to create a small lip on the bowl. I think this adds a lot to the emerging bowl over having the bowl flush with the top surface. But relieving the surface is scary. Easy does it. Now I can move the tailstock away and hollow the hemisphere. I'll follow this with a lot of sanding. Before removing the emerging bolt from the faceplate, trimming off the base and sanding again and finishing with walnut oil. This is my first emerging bowl. I went all in and made it with a natural edge on the end of a green branch. This is still hazelnut, just not dry yet. I pruned it this year. Still, I like it. We'll see you again next week for another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next week, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Let's keep on turning.